Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna go over the embellishments on Elsa's Into the Unknown dress. Into the unknown. Anyway, um, today I'm gonna show you guys kind of just like how I did uh, the rhinestones and the beads and the embroidery on her dress. I do sell the embroidery files on my website, which I will link up here. And then I also sell the cosplay pattern, uh, which comes with, um, like JPEG files so that if you actually, it comes with PDF files if you would like to actually um, do like your own embroidery or your own like puffy paint. So it does come with files in the size that matches human sizes, not just like squished down to a piece of paper. Um, so yeah, that's that's available if you would like them. So you can do the, the like little embellishments any way you would like, but I'm just gonna show you today how I did mine. Let's, let's do, let's use some, let's just like rhinestone things. Let's just go have a chill time, rhinestone, hand sew some beads. Let's do the thing. All right, so let's start with the embroidery on this dress. I do have full videos on digitizing embroidery as well as embroidery for both my Elsa Spirit dress and my pumpkin dress. I will link those videos in the description. A few notes before we start, I'm using Floriani embroidery thread, Floriani fusible stabilizer, as well as embellish water soluble stabilizer for the organza. I am stitching my embroidery out on the Janome MB7, which is a seven needle embroidery machine. I did take the time to stitch out my embroidery on a practice piece of cotton so that I had an idea of how to line up my embroidery for the multi-hooping. I started with the sleeve design first because it was the easiest and it meant that I could apply beadwork on the sleeve while the other designs stitched out. So I started by tracing my pattern onto my piece, my fabric, and then cutting a rectangle out in the general size of the sleeve. I stabilized the area on the sleeve that would get embroidery and then I hooped it. I did the same concept for both the back of the bodice and the front top of the skirt. The piece you see me working on here is in fact the skirt top front. Once I thought I had my fabric hooped the way I wanted, I brought back my practice piece to make sure that it was lined up the way I wanted. If I had more than exactly the amount of fabric I needed, I could have been more lax and just stitched it out in the general area and cut the pattern piece out after the fact. But I had to be very precise with the pattern piece on my fabric first, so lining it up exactly where my draw line is was really important. Luckily for the organza, I had way more than enough fabric. So I hooped this near the edge of my fabric with at least 40 inches on either side. I used water soluble stabilizer since I needed to wash it away when it was done. And I also used RNK embroidery perfection tape to keep the organza from catching in the embroidery hoop or machine. Um, I really love this stuff. Uh, I highly recommend it if you do a lot of machine embroidery. It'll keep your fabric just close to the hoop without falling in the embroidery madness that happens with your machine. to cut away as much of the stabilizer as I can. I know I can just soak it in the water and it will dissolve, but the more of it there is, the longer you have to soak and rinse it, so I like to cut away as much as I can. I also saved the larger pieces so that I could use them in future embroidery pieces. I also cleaned up the front and back of the embroidery pieces by clipping my threads and for the pieces that had multi-hooping involved, I took this time to take out any basting stitches that the machine stitched out. After that is finished, I also pressed my embroidered area on a low heat setting to set the embroidery into the fabric. And that's everything you need to know about the embroidery. Let's move on to the beadwork on the sleeves. I decided I wanted to reference the sleeves I made for my Spirit Elsa gown by creating this line of crystals going up the sleeve. I found these crystals in my stash and they had a thread hole at each end of them so I thought this would be a great time to do some hand sewing. 
On the back of my fabric, I drew a chalk line from the middle of the embroidery design to the middle of the top of my sleeve so that I had a straight line to guide me in my sewing. Starting at the back of my fabric and the very tip of my embroidery design, I bring my needle through to the top of the fabric on my guideline. Then I thread my crystal onto my needle with the right side of the crystal to the fabric and the majority of the crystal towards me. Now I will push my needle through to the back of the fabric just enough away from the crystal for it to be able to flip to the wrong side laying on the right side of the fabric, but also still following my line on the back. Still following that line on the back, I'm going to bring the needle through to the opposite side of the crystal, and then I'm going to go backwards into the crystal hole. And now I'm going to go forward on that line and repeat the entire process over again, all the way up the sleeve. Rhinestones. All of the tools mentioned in this section of the video are from Rhinestone Genie and I will link to them in the description. You can use my code Casey to get 10% off your order. So let's jump right in. I will be using 3mm hotfix rhinestones and two different packs of snowflake stencils and I will be setting my rhinestones with my Oliso Mini. I also have parchment paper to place underneath my organza so that my rhinestones don't stick to my table, iron, board, or any of the above, and then also transfer tape. This is how I can transfer my rhinestones to my piece. I started by picking three larger stencils and three smaller stencils that I would like to use for the snowflakes on this layer. I will mention that I place all these rhinestones before I have added my organza to the skirt, but after I seamed all of my organza layers to, or seams together. Now I am going to place my stencils on my transfer paper to draw out the size I need to cut this paper to. I don't know the protocol with transfer tape, but I use one piece of paper seven to 10 times before disregarding it. Basically, as long as rhinestones are not sticking to it, I will use it. I'm also gonna save that little piece at the bottom because in, at the on the last video, I used it for the rhinestone line at the neckline. Now, with my stencils on my cookie sheet and a decent amount of rhinestones on the sheet too, I will push around the stones so that they fill the stencil. Once all of the stencils are filled with rhinestones and the rhinestones are the correct, correct side up, I will then use my transfer tape. Next, I will use my transfer tape to pick up the rhinestones on the stencil. I use my brush tool to ensure that the tape will catch all the stones and then I will pull the tape while holding the magnet down with my finger. Sometimes I also will use my fingers just to make sure all of these rhinestones get taken up by the tape. With my parchment paper underneath my organza, I will place my snowflake and 
and with my iron I set to medium, I will place it over the design and hold it for 15 to 20 seconds. repeated this process at least 50 times for the snowflakes on Elsa's skirts and that's it. There you have it. Let's see Elsa in action. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that this was helpful for you to make your own Elsa costume or just give you ideas on your own ball gowns or cosplay or whatever. Or if you just really like to hear me talk about rhinestones and how much I love the glittery, sparkly goodness of rhinestones. Thank you so much for being here. Um, now, if you like Disney and you like sewing and you like historical costuming, and you like pretty things, please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and uh, until next, well actually it's just gonna be Sunday, I will be doing a video on the caged crinoline. So um, I said the caged, I don't know why I said that. I'm going to be showing you how I make a caged crinoline on, and I think I said Friday, but it's really Sunday, December 6th. Please check it out. I will see you guys all back here then. And uh, you, you know, happy sewing. I'll see you later.